yogurt comes in various flavors like vanilla, strawberry and banana. Jessa Farm Dairy. Always trusted, always delicious. Stand up to be counted. Brought to you by UBOS. It's your right. Just can you imagine that we have to be counted with everything, including our animals? Isn't that strange? Census is a very important event. It's the official counting of population and housing. It's very important for everyone to participate and answer all questions truthfully. Is there any suspicious about the things they're asking? <laughs> the information you give is very confidential. Now it is used for planning, improving service delivery, and equitable resource allocation countrywide. Hey. Oh. Census is here. Get ready to be counted. Starting from 28th August to 6th September 2014. Together, we count. This message is brought to you by Uganda Bureau of Statistics. And the change of government won't stop a thing. I've run out of fingers counting the number of multinationals setting up here. What about the three companies that announced their plans to launch last week? I say they're shortly. Me? I'd be looking to sell. At what price? More. Much, much more. I don't know who you are or how you know these things. But one thing I'm sure of, you're in the wrong job. Here, call me tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'd like to hear more from you. Are you ready for your big break? The East African, understanding the region. Good afternoon. Welcome to our lunchtime newscast and TV at one. Let's start off by taking a look at the headlines. Organizers of the Cancer Run collect over 300 million shillings in the Kampala Marathon. One Ugandan has died and three others are seriously injured in an accident along the Juba Nimule Road. And coming up as well, India registers a six-wicket victory over England in the one-day international cricket game. Welcome once again. This is NTV at One. I am Rachel Arinitwe Mwine. Hundreds of Ugandans stand up at Kololo Independence Grounds Ali this morning to take part in the cancer run where former Tanzanian President Ali Hassan Mwinyi was the chief runner. The organizers say, say close to 
300 million shillings was raised in the charity event. The Pepsi and Centenary Bank sponsored Rotary Cancer Run, now in its third year, is organized to raise funds towards the completion of the Rotary Centenary Cancer Ward at St. Francis Hospital in Zambia. The planned 36 bed capacity ward is estimated to cost 1.3 billion shillings and is currently in its final stages. All of us, or many of us, have lost friends, colleagues, relatives to cancer. And we had only one designated cancer treatment center, which was in Mulago Hospital. And they were clearly overwhelmed. So we felt it is important we have another one in another hospital. Regarding the funding gap that we needed to close, we needed about 300 million to close the funding gap that we have to be able to complete the cancer ward. The cancer ward is 80% completed, so the 300 million gap that we've been mobilizing should be able to see us through by the close of the year. And the indication, preliminary indication, we are getting from the Treasury is that we are at the mark. We could be about to hit the mark or hit the mark or there slightly over and above. But I trust that we've been able to make a good return on this engagement. Alex Chirop has won this year's 21-kilometer cancer run that attracted scores of runners to Kampala. The women's top accolade was won by Lilian Anzazi. Regina Cheretich clinched gold in the 5-kilometer race, while Edirisa Bukosi emerged the winner in the men's category. Rachel Chimbugwe and Emmanuel Nankunda won gold in the 10-kilometer category for men and women, respectively. President Yoram Museveni has warned cultural institutions against sectarianism. The president said such practice polarizes society and can lead to underdevelopment. He made the remarks yesterday at Igongo Cultural Center in Mbara District. Moving on, officials from Uganda Bureau of Statistics are raising concern about the slow pace of the census enumeration exercise across landing sites in areas like Mayuge District. The enumerators say most of the fishermen leave their homes at dawn to go fishing on Lake Victoria. We have a report. When our reporter visited Buguto landing site, a number of fishmongers who are expected to be enumerated were engaged in their livelihood. Many of them said they had to go to the lake early to prepare their fishing nets for the day's hunt, promising to return later for the census exercise. <laughs> Other residents accuse the enumerators of delaying to come to their homes. 
Sawa kumi na ibili wa watu seko kuandi kabe. Wani ba kuda kusawa ngai na o itani. Kale usoko kuda kumaro wa yaku sendi. O itani no era eka. The new has said in many homes, women cannot tell the date of birth of their husbands. The However, despite the setback, a few locals were counted. A speeding bus yesterday had a head-on collision with an ambulance belonging to Nimule Hospital. The driver of the ambulance, Charles Alo, died on the spot, while two others in the Bakulu coach sustained serious injuries at Pageri in Lubon, South Sudan. Another bus, baby coach, on the way to Uganda from Juba lost control and overturned at Gordon Hill, seven kilometers to Nimule border post, killing two people. The two who died are Nyoni Yoram, a Ugandan, and James Tombe Lukinya, a South Sudanese. About 21 others, including eight Ugandans and 12 South Sudanese, were rushed to Gulu Referral Hospital. In 2011, 28 people died on the spot when Baby Coach and Bakulu were involved in a head-on collision on the Jubanimule Highway in South Sudan. At 5 a.m. yesterday, a fusel lorry from Bali to Juba carrying onions and tomatoes overturned towards a Tiak trading center in Amuru district. Three people died on the spot and four others were rushed to Atiak Health Center 3. An unfortunate incident right there. Let's now take a short break and TV at 1 continues to stay with us. White Star Laundry Bus Soap with a lemon fragrance and you'll have a fresh, clean day. Be like a star. Use White Star. White Star Laundry Bus Soap. All day fresh, clean. Stand up to be counted. Brought to you by UBOS. It's your right. Just can you imagine that we have to be counted with everything, including our animals? Isn't that strange? Census is a very important event. It's the official counting of population and housing. It's very important for everyone to participate and answer all questions truthfully. Then it's suspicious about the things they're asking. <laughs> the information you give is very confidential. Nella, it is used for planning, improving service delivery, and equitable resource allocation countrywide. Mm. Oh. Census is here. Get ready to be counted. Starting from 28th August to 6th September 2014. Together, we count. This message is brought to you by Uganda Bureau of Statistics. On the next episode brought to you by at orange we know you want to do more on the internet that's why we bring you happy hour day and night on the next episode of there are so many mosquitoes come downstairs you don't worry about me i am not so delicate if my son's misdeeds cannot hurt me then what harm will these mosquitoes and heat do to i just told you you will not come and that is final I'm not a kid anymore. I can take care of myself without your help. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now you see, a daughter will use this pen for writing her exams. Download movies at the lowest prices and never fast from Orange. Dial star 133 hash to buy a data bundle. Happy hour changes with Orange. Today changes with Orange. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Although Uganda's constitution and a range of other laws prohibit female genital mutilation, the age-old practice still goes on in parts of northeastern Uganda. Josephine Karunji spoke with some of the surgeons who used to engage in this outlawed practice and filed this report. 
These are some of the so-called sergeants who previously did the cutting, but they renounced FGM and are now change agents against the practice. This 62-year-old was a sergeant for over 10 years and claims to have cut over 100 girls every year. This means at least 1,000 girls braved her knife. She was initiated by an elderly woman and not long thereafter, she became a master. The job came, like others, with benefits. Sometimes she's given sorghum, she's given gold, she's given money. She's, she's saying that those days when she was active, mutilating, she could not even cultivate the garden because she could get enough from after mutilating girls. Mm. Mm. Okay, she says that uh, they have been getting something as a remuneration from the parents of the girls. The irony of her situation, and she shares this with her colleagues, is that with time they became partially blind. None was willing to explain how this happened. But many carried on despite the handicap until the law caught up with them. But they are now advocates for change even as they seek compensation from government. Uh, she she's saying that they also asked the government to, to do something, at least to give them something like maybe IGS to replace the work she has been doing. The circumcision ritual involves cutting a part of the female genitals or entirely removing them. The aim is to check the woman's sexual feelings. The cutting had no regard for hygiene and disease. She could use one knife, the special knife for mutilation. That knife is, a, is crooked. It is half a cycle knife, which, is, which she says that she could use for all the girls. And after a girl was cut? There are a certain uh, tray that they can get leaves, pound it, and then, then they pour on the womb. Or sometimes they get the, the breast milk, and uh, then they pour there as a sign of uh, trying to cool it traditionally. Breast milk and the crushed tree leaves apparently helped fast track the healing process. The women claim that in their years as sergeants, none of the girls ever reported notable complications, but the community tells a different story. Of girls who are mutilated when they're still young uh, to get complications when they meet with the husband. That was sometimes some just normally do die during uh, delivery. The girls brave the knife or razor blade depending on the surgeon's choice of instrument because they wanted to get the same respect they saw those before them accorded. We were told that some of these girls are now beginning, we are beginning to cut themselves just to get that respect and also because the men would not marry them unless they were cut. The men those days used to prefer cut girls than these ones which are not cut because they were saying that uh, these girls which are cut are clean. And then they are also respected, they have undergone their uh, initiation. So they, they, even when they are presiding over girl ceremonies in the community, uh, they were valued more than these other girls who are not cut. It is believed the Ugandan communities adopted the FGM culture from Kenyan Pokot. Some say the practice was to ensure purity of the girls in marriage, with a belief that they would not develop sexual feelings in the absence of their husbands. For uh, a girl who is not mutilated, she sometimes she might go and becomes a prostitute. That's why they say that. Uh, that's why they mutilate. These women are not shy speaking to us. They say it is a practice they have carried forward from their forefathers. Besides, it was a means for earning a living and bestowing respect to the girls and their families when the practice was still the norm. Josephine Karunji, NTV. In sport, India adjusted a six-wicket victory over England to take a 2 0 lead in a one-day international cricket series played in England. Ambati Rayudu inspired India with half a century. And in tennis, Andy Murray advanced to the last 16 with a four-set win over Andrei Kuznetsov in the U.S. Open match. We have more in our international news roundup. England suffered another demoralizing defeat as India moved 2 0 ahead with two games left in the one day series cut herself a six wicket triumph. England's Alastair Cook had 44 and Alex Hales 42 reached 82 for no loss after 18 overs before 3 for 15 fell in 28 balls. It needed 42 from Josh Butler and 30 in 18 balls from James Treadwell to take England to a modest 227. 
um, but Ruyudu struck an unbeaten 64 as India won with seven overs to spare. In tennis, Andy Murray moved into the last 16 at the U.S. Open with a fourth set win over Russia's Andrei Kuznetsov in New York. The 2012 champion won 6 1 7 5 4 6 6 2 with a patchy performance on the Louis Armstrong Stadium, the second show caught at Flushing Meadows. Murray mitigated any sense of real crisis by dominating the fourth set, and he will play French ninth seed Joe Wilsford Songa in round four. Goff had Ian Potter failing to build on his first round showing in Boston after cutting a 73 on the second day. A 67 on Friday had Potter in the mix, but the poor form that has dogged him for much of 2014 returned on yesterday. Ryan Palmer and Jason Day lead on 8 under with Potter who needs a captain's pick from Paul McGingley to make Europe's Ryder Cup team 6 back. World number 1 Rod McRoy shot a 69 to move to 3 under at halfway. Porter is expected to earn a wild card from Europe captain McGingley thanks to his previous success in the competition, but his form still appears fragile after two nightmare holes on Saturday. That's all we heard for you on NTV at 1. We do thank you for joining us from the team behind the scenes and from myself, it's good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the new speed presented to you by Lady Sly and Survivor. Follow, follow the beat, follow the beat from the studio to the street. Info with the flow, keep you sharp and in the know. Sit back, relax, enjoy the news, follow. Ebola is spreading and the world is in panic. The virus is so deadly it could become an epidemic. In the efforts to contain the deadliest disease, Liberia has closed all schools and public facilities. From Sierra Leone to Guinea to Liberia, it could soon spread to the rest of West Africa. First discovered in Zaire in 1976, the recent outbreak has been the deadliest. With more than 500 dead and hundreds infected, even though vaccines have been successfully tested, the situation is bleak because no cure is expected. Mainly because Ebola hits the poorest communities, people with no money for pharmaceutical companies. But the virus could be used in a bioterrorist attack, and that fear is keeping research efforts on track. Some say if this notorious virus could spread to the West, this would definitely be a much bigger market. Investments would increase and solutions put to the test. Medicine too follows economic interest. Human trafficking is on the rise in East Africa, but not much is reported about it in the media. All East African countries have been identified as sources, transit and destination countries of the trade. The long-standing war and prevailing conflicts have also led to human trafficking in the neighboring countries. From Dear Congo to Northern Uganda to South Sudan, human trafficking prevails with the help of a gun. In Tanzania, children are trafficked for their organs. The target is albino, street kids and poor orphans. Used in witchcraft for charms and material benefits, some young kids are trafficked to bake on the streets. A growing number of youthful job seekers is now falling to rogue agents and cheaters. They promise lucrative jobs beyond the wildest dreams of their disparate and unsuspecting victims. If East Africa is to open up its borders eventually, there's urgent need to cap this unlawful industry. It takes advantage of space exploration often leads to of some how created I to store a real which could to space allow us to alien P drives. Survivor. Reporting live and direct with love and respect. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Follow the beat. Follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat, follow the beat. Follow the beat.
Win big with Omo First Action. Simply collect Omo wrappers, take a Mubaso Kuya Manyago, and drop it at the nearest collection point. Tosuwa! Omo Eka Wunderuno! Mama, mama! Washing with Omo has never been more rewarding. Huh? Nice moves, Floydo. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. <laughs> Told you. Check out the new Fanta Orange. Now with an even better taste. Today's highlight. Twelve beauties looking for love. Three bachelors on the spotlight trying to be Mr. Right. <laughs> Today's highlight. This program is rated GE. It is suitable for all audiences. Down. 